Hi everybody, welcome back. Hope you had a good week off. Um, now we are going to jump back into things and uh, we are going to be busy this week. There's going to be a whole bunch of videos. Uh, at least the first couple are going to be really short. Uh, we'll work our way into it. Um, this introduces the second half of the course. So, so here we go. We're going to change our pace and our look and our feel considerably. The second half of the course in so many ways is a math course. Okay, the first couple of videos here are just going to be some basic refresher videos uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, bring everybody along. I don't know where you guys are all at. Some of you, uh, high school is maybe a long time ago. Some of you, maybe math wasn't your thing. So I just, I'm going to start at the very beginning. First couple of videos are going to be really basic math stuff. Um, this week, there's not going to be a lot that applies back to electricity specifically. You are going to see a little bit of, we, we're going to talk about it in the context of electricity, but it's going to be very much math related all week long. Okay. Um, there's a very good reason for this and there's a, there's a definite purpose. Um, essentially, and I've already hinted to, to where this is going, is, is what we're going to end up doing is basically go back and do Ohm's law calculations, okay, circuit calculations, uh, just like you did last term in the DC circuits, but now we're going to look at it in an AC environment. Okay, so we have learned about uh, coils, which we call inductors. And just before the test, we talked about capacitors and some conversation about uh, the relationship um, between uh, those loads and, and a changing environment where the current and the voltage are constantly changing and how they react to that and, and fight back against that change. So, so that's where we're going. Okay, we're going to do an awful lot of math when we get there. And we're going to do an awful lot of math to get there. Okay, so the conversation is going to start right here. In terms of what kind of math, okay, this is really the answer to that. All right, it's a lot of, of geometry. Okay, so um, when we learn three phase, I said that three phase is pretty easy because whenever you ask a question, the answer is always root three. Okay, a similar sort of conversation can be had here. Okay, as we move through these, these circuits and we try to resolve you know, voltage and current and power and so on and so forth. And, and the question is, well, how are we going to figure that out? The answer will always be draw a right angle triangle. Okay. The reason for that we'll get into much later, but, but this is really what the math is going to be for the second half of the course about the right angle triangle. So it makes sense to start at the beginning. Okay. So what does a right angle triangle look like? Well, it can take all kinds of different forms. Okay. But Essentially, there it is. What do you mean, David, can t take all kinds of different forms? Well, it might look like this. Very tall and skinny. Or it might look like this. Oops, actually, let's eliminate all of that and just go way out here and come on back. Okay, so in all these cases, what I've drawn is this little square to indicate where the right angle is of the triangle. Okay. That's important for us to move forward with the conversation, but it's something we're never going to come back to. Okay, as long as that's there, we can move on to whatever else it is we need to deal with. Okay, so that's a kind of an initial image. I'm going to change pace here and, and pull up a PowerPoint, and we're going to define all of these um, sides and angles. Okay, so let's figure out what all of the different sides and angles of our triangle are called. Okay, because I'm going to be throwing these terms out all the time and so we better start at the beginning make sure we're all on the same page so we understand what uh, what we call each side and each angle of a triangle so as I just indicated here's the right angle okay it's this angle here in the corner with the square <clears throat> okay will always be a 90 degree angle that has to be there in order for us to do all of the rest of the work that we're going to do okay so while that's the fundamental starting point we're going to move on and never come back to it Okay, so this angle is identified by placing the square in the square corner. So next we're going to talk about this thing called the angle theta. Uh, and you're going to hear me refer endlessly to the angle theta. So what is it? Well, it's the angle of interest. Aside from the right angle triangle, we have two others. Okay, and one of them we really don't care a lot about. And the other one is kind of what everything is about. 
Okay, so the angle of interest we call the angle theta. Okay, for the purpose of this lesson, we're going to call x our angle theta. Okay, but we could call angle y our angle theta, and we could have the very same conversation. It would just move some of our labels around. Okay, but for now, we're going to focus on angle x, and we're going to call that the angle theta. So the other angle okay in this case is this angle up here angle y and for the most part we kind of just ignore it okay it's the other angle all right but of interest okay we know that the three interior angles must add up to 180 degrees okay so this angle plus this angle plus this angle gives us a full 180 degrees now since the 90 degree angle is always 90 degrees the other 90 degrees of the 180 must be made up of these two angles okay so i didn't include the equation here but the math would be that this angle this other angle is simply 90 degrees minus our angle theta and we can always calculate this other angle okay sometimes that might be helpful for us um, most of the time we kind of don't care a whole lot so those are our three angles, and now let's move on and talk about our three sides. Okay, what do we call that? So the first of the three sides that we're going to look at is what we call the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse, the first bullet there says the hypotenuse this is the side of the right angle triangle located across from the right angle itself. So notice there's the right angle there. And across the triangle from it is what we call the hypotenuse. Okay, in this image it is side C. Okay, now the, the important thing about the hypotenuse is it has a very special feature. There's one thing that you can always count on. Okay, and that is that it will always be the longest of the three sides. There's no way that the other two sides, A or B, could possibly be longer than C. If I draw this triangle differently, draw a different right angle triangle, and I knew that my lines would not be straight, but there it is. So I stretch it way out. This is supposed to be my right angle right there, believe it or not. Okay, so here's my hypotenuse over here. This is side C, and over here is side B. Can I make a B? I'm trying. There it is. Okay, and it looks like B must be almost as long as C, and that's true, it is, okay? But there's no way it could possibly be longer, okay? So no matter what the shape of our right angle triangle, C will always be the longest of the three sides, okay? Well, I said C. In this case, it's labeled C, and so it is our hypotenuse. Um, in some of my handouts, I think my labeling gets flipped around and the hypotenuse is actually labeled A. Okay, please don't allow that to confuse you. Okay, I know this is far more typical that, that it would be uh, C is the label assigned to the hypotenuse, but there's no rule that says it must be that way. We could call the hypotenuse A and, and we can still carry on. This is the reason I'm spending this time focusing on the rules is don't get hung up on the notion that the letter C is the hypotenuse. Okay, recognize that the hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle, the one across from the right angle, no matter what label gets attached to it. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse. Moving on. The next label, the next uh, side of the triangle we're going to talk about is the opposite. Okay, and so here in this case, the opposite is side B. And the reason we call it the opposite is because it is opposite of the angle theta. So just like C is across the triangle from the right angle, the opposite is across the triangle from the angle theta. In this case, we decided that we were going to use X as the angle theta, which means that B is the opposite. Okay, I'll try not to confuse you at all, but if we had decided to say that y is going to be our angle theta, then it would be this side over here labeled a 
that would be assigned the label of the opposite. Okay, so that's why before we could talk about the hypotenuse and the opposite and all of the different sides, well, the hypotenuse is never going to change. But but before we were able to have this conversation, it was necessary to first decide which angle was going to be our angle of interest, the angle theta. Okay, and so finally, the third side, we've talked about the hypotenuse, we've talked about the opposite. The third side of our triangle, we call the adjacent. Now, the adjacent carries a very important role, has a very important role. Along with the hypotenuse, it creates our angle theta. So here's our angle theta, which is x. And x is created by side C, which is the hypotenuse, and side A, which is the adjacent. So that's how we would define the adjacent, is that along with the hypotenuse, it is the side that creates the angle theta. Okay, so finally, you know, by defining what the adjacent is and by defining what the opposite is, we are not limited to a label A or B. <clears throat> and so if you come across something that has different labeling, it's not going to throw you off because you have a particular uh, definition here which, which helps you identify where it is you go to find that particular angle. Okay, so I'm going to end the first video right there. Okay, um, like I said, the first couple are going to be short. I'm going to upload a whole bunch of them because next we're going to move on to how do we use that information to do some math. So we'll come right back and look at that.